Well, with that, I would like to introduce uh, the next speaker, Mr. Rick Echevarria, Vice President, Software and Services Group, General Manager, Platform Security Division at Intel Corporation. Good morning, everyone, and thanks to Cyber Week and Tel Aviv University for the opportunity to talk about security in the concept, context of artificial intelligence right after our legal disclaimer. Can we get through that? Waiting for the slides to move. OK, thank you. For 50 years, Intel has been dedicated to delivering world-changing technology. And as many of you know, most of those years right here in Israel. We're doing that to make people's lives better, to solve problems in society, and to fundamentally impact the way businesses are run and they're transformed on a global scale. Intel's motivation to do this is a strong desire to improve the human experience through the use of technology. It's interesting to me and to many of you that over that same time period, professionals in artificial intelligence have been trying to do the same, albeit ineffectively. Between a lack of data and a lack of computing, people haven't gotten the benefit of augmented human intelligence until today. Artificial intelligence is not a thing. It's a mix of technologies that together, working in concert, are able to augment what humans are capable of doing. Artificial intelligence requires advances in software, tools, optimizations. It requires innovation in hardware. Not only the compute capabilities, but artificial intelligence is going to impact changes in memory architectures, in storage, in communications. And as you've heard from the previous speakers, because no one company can really unleash the outcomes of artificial intelligence, we need an ecosystem, an ecosystem that's ready and willing to collaborate. And just as is the case with any workload, but a workload with so much potential as artificial intelligence, and in the spirit of Cyber Week, security must underpin artificial intelligence. These three pillars that I mentioned earlier need to come together in conjunction with security if we are to, again, unleash the outcomes of cybersecurity. So, when we think about security in the context of artificial intelligence, we look at it as two different implementations. And I'm going to cover those here in a second. But first, I want to make the point that we need to ensure the integrity of the compute, of the data, and the algorithms. Those are three fundamental elements that are important to unleash what this workload can deliver. Again, we see security in the context of AI as two implementations. The first one is security for AI, where we focus on the protection of algorithms, compute, and data. Artificial intelligence solutions are being deployed today. And security must be an important consideration as those solutions evolve. The second implementation is artificial intelligence for security, where we use AI for the detection of advanced exploits. The second implementation is very important and has a lot of potential, but it's still embryonic. And I encourage us as an industry to manage the expectations of the second implementation. I'm going to talk about both implementations, starting with security for artificial intelligence. And I'm going to do that by describing two actual use cases. The first is multi-party machine learning, and the second is federated learning. Machine learning algorithms, especially those based in deep neural networks, have achieved remarkable results in a number of different domains. However, machine learning algorithms require access to data, which is often 
privacy sensitive. Examples of industries with privacy sensitive data abound everywhere. In fact, you heard this morning from the Prime Minister around digital health, healthcare, financial services, and especially relevant to this audience, the ability to share threat intelligence across different industries. Let's be clear, not being able to access data is one of the biggest risks to the potential of artificial intelligence. Think of the possibilities if we had mechanisms in place to make the best data available to unleash the power of new models, new algorithms in artificial intelligence. Therein lies our problem statement. How do we enable access to the best data available in an increasingly privacy-aware world? Well, Intel's a technology company. Let's talk a little bit about technology. Homomorphic encryption and hardware-trusted execution environments are two capabilities that are available to address this. Intel researchers are making significant strides towards practical applications of homomorphic encryption. And this is not an interactive session, so I'm not going to ask you what homomorphic encryption is. I'm going to explain it. Homomorphic encryption is the ability for computer systems to act on data that's encrypted. And the trick is that you do that without decrypting that data. This level of encryption, this level of technology, would enable researchers to operate on data in a secure and private way while delivering significant results. But as many as you know, homomorphic encryption is still a ways from today from, being able to, from, from us being able to use it. And the industry is still understanding the compute requirements and capabilities for homomorphic encryption. And this is why Intel is working on other technologies, like hardware-trusted execution environments that can deliver high compute efficiency and enhance privacy. Trusted environments like Intel's SGX enable more secure uses of private data for artificial intelligence. But our innovation goes one step further because we have capabilities in our silicon that enable us to only allow authorized code to act on the data. And if that code is in any way tampered or modified, then we basically disable the operations, and we eliminate the environment where that computing data came together. Now you're asking yourselves, Rick, how real is this? Is it possible today? Last year, Microsoft Azure became the first cloud service provider to announce and offer capabilities, security capabilities, for protecting data in use through a number of tools and services called Azure confidential computing services. And one of the solutions that Microsoft is committed and planning to deliver is multi-party machine learning, what I just talked about, using the hardware capabilities that I just described. And in a few minutes, I'm going to highlight a collaboration that we're very excited about in the area of homomorphic encryption. While multi-party machine learning will be of great value, Sometimes taking all this data and moving it to a centralized location is just not possible or feasible. Federated learning enables data owners at the edge of networks to actually collaborate to learn and develop shared prediction models while keeping all the training data at the edge. Therefore, decoupling the ability to develop models from the need to centralize that data. This also enables us to use the edge devices and all that compute for model training. However, there are two major security issues with this approach. The first is called model poisoning, where you can actually inject outlier data, outlier data points and parameters and change the nature of the model, change its intent. The second is data spilling, where the infrastructure or the devices can leak data at the edge. Robust aggregation and the use of hardware-based trusted execution environments are two approaches that can address model poisoning and data spinning. 
For those of you who like statistics, robust aggregation is a field of study that is looking at ways in which we can manage the impact of individual contributions on the definition of models. And one of the ways we can ensure that these outlier parameters do not impact and influence the model is by smoothing out, again, how those updates impact model evolution. Robust aggregation as a methodology gets even better with the use of hardware, as we can provide protection at the edge and then allow the aggregator in the center to cooperate with trusted edge devices to filter out outlier updates. I now want to turn our attention to the second implementation, AI for security, an implementation of artificial intelligence that holds quite a bit of promise. As many of you know, malware is one of the fastest evolving workloads, albeit a malicious workload. And one of the motivations for malware to evolve is to evade detection. That's why earlier this year at RSA in San Francisco, we introduced Intel Threat Detection Technology. And as part of Intel Threat Detection Technology, we introduce a capability called Accelerated Memory Scanning, where you use the integrated graphics on the device to detect malware in memory. This capability, Accelerated Memory Scanning, can actually be improved. It can be enhanced with machine learning. How do we do this? We do this by pro providing a proactive machine learning based inference model that actually works in conjunction with the reactive pattern based approach that we announced at RSA. Let me translate this into plain English. What this means is that we have the ability to build models that represent malware as images in memory. And then we take a snapshot of malware in memory and we use our know-how in vision data classification and apply it on these memory snapshots. Quite a bit of innovation there across different technology vectors. While I was describing multi-party machine learning, I highlighted our collaboration with Microsoft and Azure Confidential Computing Services. We need to collaborate with the industry if we're going to solve the challenges and capitalize on the opportunities that I've just described here. And I'm really excited to introduce and announce three collaborations. By combining the machine learning capabilities with the capabilities and the flexibility of containers at the edge of networks, we can make machine learning systems much more useful and enable that federated learning model that I described before. That's why Intel is collaborating with Docker to help make artificial intelligence and containers themselves much more secure via the integration with several silicon technologies, including virtualization for isolation and trusted execution environments. Fortanix and Intel are working together to extend the capabilities of the Fortanix runtime encryption platform to support and secure Python and R language-based applications that have widespread use in the data science community. And by doing this, developers and data scientists can now train algorithms with the best data as well as improve the integrity of these algorithms. And the third and last collaboration that I highlight is our collaboration with Teammates Duality. And we're collaborating to address the challenges of artificial intelligence workloads like homomorphic encryption. We are very excited about this collaboration. As I mentioned before, there are computational challenges regarding homomorphic encryption that need to be addressed. And our joint goal is to address these challenges with one of the best, if not the best, team ever assembled in the area of encryption and algorithms. So let me wrap this up. In summary, we are committed to delivering security in the context of artificial intelligence by improving the integrity of the compute, the data, the algorithms, critical elements that need to come together to create and deliver value. 
we will continue to innovate with the industry across the two implementations that I mentioned. Security for artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence for security. And finally, our collaborations with Docker, Fortanix, Duality, and many others in the industry are fundamental to delivering the value of security in the context of artificial intelligence. And with that, and on behalf of Intel, thank you for your time.